Hello. Simon. How are you doing? Really good. How are you? It's good to see you. Listen, I don't know whether I should call you MBE. Well, I've I've actually just got my investiture date, so um, that will be really shortly. Congratulations. That's really good news. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about your company, because um, clearly living with an allergy and having, you know, or, or, or that kind of passion about it was one of the main drivers for setting up such a successful company. Give us a little whistle-stop tour of, um, of why you set things up, what it's all about, what you sell, and the kind of passion that goes behind all of the products. Sure. So I have severe anaphylaxis. So I my first attack was when I was just two years old. I don't remember that at all. My parents tell me that it was really scary for them because it was the first time in our family that we'd ever had anyone that had allergies. After that, um, when I was rushed to hospital in intensive care, luckily I was treated and they found out that I was allergic to a lot of different things like peanuts, tree nuts, sesame, uh, and also things outside the top 14 allergens like chickpeas, lentils, a lot of legumes, that, that type of thing. Um, and over the years, as I grew up, I for example, in primary school, I would have to sit alone at what's called the allergy table, which always made me feel, I guess, in a way different and I yeah. always wanted to be included I always felt like I was missing out especially with like Christmas dinners and mm. Easter that type of thing so what I wanted to do as I grew up was create an inclusive brand um, a food brand in particular that that had delicious food but that everyone could enjoy around the same table so we have things from baking mixes, like banana breads, brownie mixes, chocolate cake that you can you can make for a birthday party or um, just just in general if you just want to eat cake. Um, and then we've also got confectionery, which is your great great for like food on the go, um, as we're always snacking. And then we also have our snack bars um, and superfoods as well. No, it's awesome, and and very much the philosophy that we have here at uh, at Anaphylaxis UK is around, you know, you can do things. You, know, you should be able to go on holiday. You shouldn't be excluded from any school activity in particular. Going to, um, you know, going to school trips, going on sporting activities, going, you know, doing the everyday things that um, everybody should enjoy is very much at the heart of what we do. So, um, you know, completely with you on all of that there. Um and especially around the schools, you've got a campaign around schools that really uh, complements that what we're doing in our with our Safer Schools program, um, allergy wise, and, and that's really to educate and support not just individual teachers, but our approach is a whole school approach that then uh, gives all of the staff within that school the ability, uh, skills and understanding of allergies and how to manage anaphylaxis and uh, emergency situations but also shares the knowledge with it with the uh, children and the pupils in that school as well so it's a really popular and um, successful course I think somebody gave me the number of 60,000 people have done our allergy wise course which is absolutely amazing I'm so proud of that um, but we want 60,000 more and 60,000 more after that you know the more people and launching our recent um, workplace allergy wise course you know, just shows that we need to um, get into more places. But tell us a little bit about your campaign with the schools. Yeah, I think it's fantastic what you guys are doing as well. I, I'm an ambassador for Anaphylaxis campaign, Indeed, which we're proud of. So medical as well, which I noticed that you put in some of your blogs that you do, especially for flying. It's always great to have a medical ID. But in terms of the school campaign, I really wanted to get to children because after the MBE, it was really important that we could give back and change the narrative for school children. At the moment, I think it's around 30% of children who have allergies face bullying, which is quite high. Um, and if we can educate children from a primary level and get them just to understand allergies. So in our allergy awareness assembly pack, what happens is it's it's like a presentation and they learn what the top 14 allergens are. They learn how to look out for someone who has an allergy. What are the symptoms? How to use an auto injector and what, why they need to go and get a teacher or an adult um, 
to be able to administer administer it. So I think all of those things are really important. What we found was we did the allergy awareness assembly and then after that they have like worksheets to fill in so that, that it's embedded in their their knowledge and they can take that forward as they grow up. And what we found was a lot of people wanted to have allergies at the end, which was really interesting. But we did something called an allergy superhero where they had to design a poster and we had hundreds of entries. I think we wanted to um, get to 3,000 children and we trained over 130,000 children in the space of two months, which was absolutely phenomenal. I, I, I couldn't, have, um, couldn't have asked for more from the team and the amount of other people that got involved I partnered with uh, two allergy mums one called one from the allergy badge Natalie Hopkins and then also Stephanie uh, from Positively Allergic who has a son Will who is uh, has severe allergies as well. That's very good and uh, I think the ch the challenge that we've often faced with schools is that they you know that they, they don't have a budget they don't have this it's not essential you know it's not deemed to them as essential part of the um uh, kind of safety and uh, uh, risk assessment that they need to make in a, in a school. How have you managed to get into those schools? The Allergy Awareness Assemblies has been for free that we've um, we've done. We created the whole videos, everything, the whole content pack um, as part of our, in a way, our like our corporate strategy. Um, in that sense, that we wanted to we wanted to give back. Also, we had the amount of mums that came forward that wanted to deliver those presentations in school. We had like an army of mums and dads that were going into schools just delivering it and it just really took off. From there also we made sure that the allergy awareness pack was able to be played on its own. So say an um, allergy parent or a teacher or a head headmaster wouldn't be able to um, actually give the allergy awareness presentation they could literally have it on an ipad or a screen and press play and it would do it all for them and it will allow the children just to be occupied but also mm -hmm. learn something really important um, for later on in life yeah it's very important that it's you know it's your mates at school it's it's not just the teachers you know no, exactly. I cast my mind back you know i can't couldn't didn't particularly like school a lot of my <laughs> former teachers are listening in but um you know, it's your, you go for your mates, don't you? But And you look out for each other. Uh, exactly. So it's so important to have an understanding. You know, they may not know the um, the significance of I don't know, messing around and flicking peanuts or throwing yoghurt or all of those things. You know, the kids do, don't they? Yeah, and, and washing their hands and also looking out for their, their friends. Like yeah. you said, it's your friends that look after you at school and yeah. your friends are with you all the time versus a teacher in, a, in the playground, they might get to you a couple of minutes later than your friend would. Yeah, no, it's super important. Brilliant. Well done. And now moving on to um, holidays and going on holiday. I mean, crikey, it, you know, you need to be abroad, wouldn't you, this summer? It's a bit of a washout. Uh, and you're, you've been doing some um, campaigning around um, preparedness for, for going on holiday. Um, equally, you know, but, uh, kind of running in parallel to what we've got. We've got some really good and helpful resource on our website uh, around tips and the kind of questions that you'd ask but presumably you know are you well traveled do you go doesn't you you're not put off by going abroad going no, on I, holiday I, traveling i always advocate that your allergies shouldn't have to limit you but it's all about that preparation and it's going to places like the like anaphylaxis uk to get that correct information on how to prepare so in terms of our airline campaign that we launched I wanted it to be quite hard hitting um, and we were worried at the beginning how it would be received because on the billboards it said would you take a weapon on board a flight which is which is really hard hitting it's obviously everyone would say no as soon as you ask them that question but what we had on the side was um, some nuts with a hand around it and also at the bottom think before you snack and that's what we wanted to do it wasn't saying that nuts is the most important allergen or anything like that it was more picking one allergen and 
really having that message follow through. And I think as we progress the campaign, we'll start delving into other allergies like dairy and gluten and other things. But it was really about getting the consumer, the customer to be able to understand when they board that flight and when they hear that announcement, no, they really should put away that packet of nuts. They really shouldn't eat it on board because there is someone on there that could potentially go into anaphylaxis. And the the worst thing that can happen is they do that and they have to divert from their holiday anyway. So it's not only going to cost the airline 70 to 80,000 per diversion, but you're not going to get on holiday either. So I think it's really important. And, and I'm a big advocate for travel. I think even if you're not able to eat the food for example out there it's so important you can have all the other experiences so I've traveled to so many different places from sort of Europe to the Caribbean and I worked in Beijing and Shanghai um, just after university my mum was absolutely fuming when I got the job out there she didn't want me to take it she thought it would be really difficult for allergies Saying that it was, I did have to get suitcases worth of food sent over just so I could eat. But at the same time, I really learned how to prepare and how to how to take care of myself. So, for example, with flying, I always advocate look up the airline policy before you go. Make sure you have it printed. Make sure you have everything to hand. Also, many airlines have a policy where you can ask for special assistance and you can input your allergy and you can board before other passengers board and you can wipe down all the seats on top of that if you're allowed to pre-order your meal do check it if not always carry carry snacks carry extra food that you can just have also be aware that sometimes your food can be taken away if it's not pre-packaged so if it's in a container just make sure that it's not too liquidy because otherwise it just gets removed um, and then other things would be like informing the crew so on getting them to understand how how severe your allergy is where you're sitting whether you carry an EpiPen all of those things are so important and then when you get to the other end if you're staying in a hotel it's really important to speak to people like the uh, um, the the catering manager um, and also the the hotel staff because they're the ones that are going to be able to navigate what you can eat and what you can't eat if you're not staying in the likes of like an airbnb have you ever had an issue with taking your adrenaline pen through um airport security we often have uh, people that are worried about how you actually get that through the um you know the x-ray detector or if you carry it on your person through the uh, metal detector i've never had a problem out of the uk however always had a problem back into the uk which is really interesting i guess because the uk really understands our allergies a bit more so epipen even jext are, are understood i did get one question though recently when i carried the jext pen and an epipen because they i didn't have two of the same because the pharmacy didn't have it so they just gave me one of each um and they asked me well why is it different and they didn't know what the jext pen was but no, it's absolutely fine. You just put, I put it always in the separate um, clear plastic bag and make sure it's really visible for people to see. They shouldn't have any problem with it. And it's really important when you're coming back into the UK, you just explain it. I've also had it where I always carry a doctor's note and it just says, oh, Julianne Ponin uh, has anaphylaxis and will be carrying x epipens because sometimes they can get a bit funny if you put your liquids in with your epipens and then you can't fit everything in so they want you to have a a letter to go alongside it that's good advice lots of people are worried that they'll get confiscated and then they don't have them at all at the um for their holiday and um may well put them in the uh, i will say you put it in the boot but you know put it in the uh, in the, the hold, hold. Yeah. um in that you know in their luggage but then you're you're you know, on the flight without that um without that you adrenaline pen really. but apparently some flights do carry them i'm finding a lot more such as say like iberia they have epi pens or uh, an auto injector on board the flight as well yeah i think the flat flying causes anxiety amongst many people um for a variety of reasons you don't want to add to it um, and spoil your holiday because of an allergy but then once you're um once you are abroad um staying in a hotel what what sort of um, advice and tips would you give people 
ahead of staying in a hotel when they when they are away? I would say definitely contacting the hotel before you go. Um, also have a look around the hotel where the nearest hospitals are because that's really really important. Just just for I guess just in case. Just in case it's it's just always good to know. Um, and also for example with your travel insurance, for example ours is through our bank and they will have a specific policy for a nut allergy or sesame allergy etc it's really important you check that you are covered before you fly with the hotel itself i would definitely recommend speaking to someone within catering if you're going to all inclusive because sometimes it, it can be misunderstood as a intolerance versus anaphylaxis mm -hmm. so if if that is the case and it has been misunderstood because it does happen time to time with the language barriers when you get there make sure you have already researched places around the hotel that you're able to get any type of food from or like restaurants that will be safe around the area and I always find this mitigates any type of risk and it doesn't spoil your holiday then because you've already planned it out it's really easy I even for example took my own food to, to Disney uh, to Universal Studios because in the restaurants, the restaurants were absolutely phenomenal, but a lot of the time I couldn't eat there, but their policy was you can bring your own food and the rest of your family can eat and you can just eat your own, which again, I think is fantastic because I didn't have to miss out not being there, but my family also got to, uh, my husband got to eat as well. Very good. Well, just check, check ahead. Same with the airline, check ahead. It's be prepared, isn't it? And just having that information in your back pocket that you know then, which will enable you to do the things like go on holiday, go to Disneyland or wherever you went, and all of the exciting and other things that people do shouldn't stop you. You just need to be prepared, do it more, advance homework. Exactly, and it's always about that cross-contamination, I find, with the airlines, because I don't sleep the night before at all. I just get... a. It, there's a lot of it plays on my mind, and sometimes it's the anxiety that's worse than actually the flight. Um, once I'm on and there, I, I'm absolutely fine. But it's more just un making sure, am I going to be able to board the flight? Because there have been times, unfortunately, where they've not allowed me to board. And that's concerning in itself. And I don't think anyone should have to go through that just because you have an allergy. No, certainly not. So uh, where would people see these uh, the billboard adverts? Are they, you've still got them displayed? Um, well, so they're all up across social media now and we're trying to take it forward, but I don't think you'll be able to see them right Not in now. the airports. Yeah, no. Um, but what you will be able to see is we're hopefully working um, with people, well, in government that are supporting the campaign, which is what I'm really excited about. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can take it to the next stage and not ban products from being on board, but just get people to think before they eat around others. Mm. Yeah, no, certainly. It's been great talking to you. It's, got, it's flown quick, but uh, I'm sure we could have gone on for a lot longer. Um, when's your, uh, when do you get your MBE? On the 27th of September. Awesome. So really and who are, you who are you taking with you? Uh, so my mum, my dad, my husband and my brother. Very good. Very, very good. You'll enjoy that and they will too. We must be very proud of you. I'm excited. I think this is probably my uh, my dad's most proudest moment for me. He he doesn't usually show it, so <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid that's a dad that. thing sometimes. <laughs> awesome to talk to you. Good Thank luck you with so the campaigning. Good luck with the school stuff. And uh, obviously, if there's anything we can do to help, then uh, give us a shout.